And welcome back to WGN TV Political Report. As Illinois' positive COVID 19 case count nears 30,000, lawmakers are beginning to assess the damage not only on the state's residents, but also the state's pocketbook. Democrats in the state Senate are asking federal officials for $41 billion as revenues continue to crash. $10 billion would go directly to Illinois' underfunded pension plans. The state is already getting more than $2.5 billion from the federal stimulus plan, but that money won't go towards filling newly created budget holes. Governor J.B. Pritzker laid out the financial damage in stark terms this week. Illinois will lose $2.7 billion in the current fiscal year that ends in June. Another $4.5 billion will be lost next year. And the governor warns if voters don't approve his graduated income tax proposal in November, that number will jump above $7 billion. Republican State Representative Deanne Mazaki's 47th district covers parts of the western suburbs from Elmhurst to Westmont. And she's also a founding partner of a law firm specializing in life sciences and has been monitoring the state's response to the ongoing pandemic. We welcome you to the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Governor Pritzker says he's not ready to make a decision about lifting or extending the state's uh, stay-at-home order. There is some uh, talk, Representative, about possibly reopening some counties, some parts of the state, where not as many people have gotten sick. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I, one of the things that I had actually been pushing the governor's office to do, and they finally started doing it, was to release the county-by-county county data, because um, there's actually several counties in Illinois that haven't had a single COVID-19 case, and when you look at all of the uh, cases statewide, they've been primarily concentrated in Chicago. Um, that's not surprising. That's consistent with what we're seeing in other nations, that you're seeing um, outbreaks in uh, nursing homes, you're seeing outbreaks in very large cities, but in areas um, that are more rural, uh, more suburban, where people can you know, have a natural form of social distancing anyways, uh, the problem hasn't been as severe. And that's why one of the things that I know our caucus is very interested in is making sure that the governor um, doesn't have a, a, a Chicago-centric view, but really starts to take a more holistic view of the entire state of Illinois and, and it gives more local freedoms to, for people to decide what is and isn't working for them in their local areas. Rep. Mazaki, you mentioned the nursing homes. Uh, so many, of course, are on lockdown, and so many of our most vulnerable citizens live there. Their families can't get in and out. In and out. It's only the health care workers uh, who are there, and there are so many cases of people uh, dying inside the nursing homes. What's the situation with nursing homes in your district, and what more can the state do? Um, you know, within my district in, uh, in DuPage County, it was a nursing home um, in Willowbrook that was one of the first major outbreaks in the area. And, you know, those are, they're, they're absolutely heartbreaking situations. They're heartbreaking for the residents, they're heartbreaking for the families. And, um, you know, I actually uh, had one neighbor who was uh, devastated that, you know, worried that she might not actually be able to see uh, her child who's living in a group home uh, setting any time in the next year or so if, if things continue on as, as they're going. Um, one of the things that I do think that is at least some positive news is that we do know, you know, some types of precautions that we can continue to take. But, you know, we have to be serious about that. Our, our older population is one of the most vulnerable, people who have pre-existing heart conditions, people with obesity issues, diabetes. Um, and, and it's a sad fact that we, you know, we see some of these in the aging population. So, you know, I, I think that everyone is all in favor of doing what we can to protect our nursing home residents. But by the same token, that doesn't mean that the entire rest of the state um, needs to be on lockdown. So I think that's an area, though, where what our caucus certainly would like to see is to have the governor start to actually work with his legislators, bring us back to Springfield, or at least start having uh, more aggressive working groups who are going to start formulating a plan for where do we need to be in the next 30 days, next 45 days, next 60 days, because people are, um, they, they've been incredibly generous and grateful and gracious in terms of trying to do what they can to protect themselves, protect their families, protect their neighbors, but they do want to know when do we actually start getting back to normal? Governor Pritzker said this week that the state faces a potentially $10 billion budget shortfall due to this uh, pandemic. Uh, wondering how exactly um, the state might be able to uh, plug that hole. Governor Pritzker, of course, wants the graduated uh, income tax proposal, wants voters to sign off on that on November. How does Illinois come up with this money without raising taxes? 
Well, the governor wanted to raise people's taxes uh, with his constitutional amendment even before all of this um, started happening. And uh, our caucus has been screaming for years that the governor, um, you know, in the other side of the aisle needs to actually be more realistic about what we can spend to make sure that we are protecting our most vulnerable residents and not um, spending projects on uh, things that don't add value, things that are tinged with corruption, uh, etc. There, there's no question that there is a huge amount of work that needs to be done, but that's exactly why I think rather than um, the Speaker of the House doing what he did last week, which is say, well, I'm going to cancel um, session for yet another day and yet another week, and you know maybe we'll get back together at some point. Um, everybody needs to come to the table and start thinking through, you know, what do we need to make sure that Illinois can start going great gangbusters to get out of this COVID pandemic situation, as opposed to, you know, digging even bigger problems and even bigger holes that we're never going to be able to financially climb out of with or without a federal bailout. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Representative Deanne Mazaki, thanks so much for joining you. Sure hope to see you in Springfield sometime soon. That'd be great. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Be All safe. Right. Uh, coming up next. There are no changes that can keep an environment like this safe. The fight to slow the spread of coronavirus inside Cook County Jail. Why advocates are asking a judge to step in after this. Thank you.